On a night in November 1940, more than 500 German bombers brought utter devastation to the city of Coventry. It was an appalling attack, made worse by a scandalous rumour that's still circulating in the city to this day. Tonight, Coventry-born Pete Waterman investigates a claim that Churchill knew the attack was coming, but deliberately did nothing to save the city. It may be 60, whatever, nine years ago to everybody else, but it could be yesterday to me. And you were absolutely terrified and you just, you just wondered, would it ever stop? The attack on Coventry was one of the most notorious bombing raids of the Second World War. It was so bad, it even gave birth to a new word, Coventrated, meaning the total destruction of a town. But what if it wasn't just a surprise attack by the enemy? What if, as it's been claimed, Winston Churchill knew about the bombing, but did nothing to stop it? There's a big question mark over the role Churchill had to play in the affair. People would like to know uh, one way or the other, because as long as they don't, it's not confirmed, people will speculate. But why would Churchill just stand by and allow a city to be bombed? The story goes that Churchill knew about the impended raid from intercepted German signals. He could have protected the city, but if he had, it would have told the Germans we'd crack their codes. He was faced with a moral dilemma. He chose to sacrifice the city. At least, that's how the story goes. The idea that Churchill put the secrecy of his intelligence source first has circulated here for decades. But is it fact or fiction? The secret source was called Ultra, and it came from Bletchley Park in Buckinghamshire. This is where some of Britain's best minds were breaking the Germans' famous Enigma codes. They were giving Churchill a steady stream of information about the enemy's war plans. So, Simon, this is the famous German Enigma machine. How does it work? You type the message into the keyboard, and through the electrical circuits within the machine, they're jumbled up, and a different letter comes up for each letter you type in on the light board. Right, so if I press in Pete, which is P, that comes up as an E, E comes up as I, T comes up as Y, and E comes up now as O. How many combinations? There are 158 million, million, million different combinations on this machine alone, which is why it's so difficult to break. But break it they did, and in November 1940, Ultra's analysts intercepted a series of German messages about the bombing raid called Moonlight Sonata. But could they identify Coventry as its target? In the 1970s, a number of writers said they could. Ultra gave Churchill and his advisers at least 48, possibly 60 hours warning of the devastating raid that was planned for Coventry. But were colourful accounts like this any more than just figments of the author's imagination? If Churchill really did know the target of the Moonlight Sonata raid, then his decision to keep it quiet had devastating consequences. I was sh shocked because it was so um, widespread. In Hartford Street, there was all holes and people, you know, covered with blankets, bodies, and stuff was falling. We lost quite a number of friends, um, and some of them, they never found the bodies. They were just, just blown away. More than 500 people were killed, and for Jean, the rumours that Churchill could have prevented it are still troubling. There is a feeling in the town that, that we were sacrificed, uh, and it would be nice to have an answer to, to sort of close that chapter one way or the other. So should these rumours about Churchill be taken seriously? Did the German codes tell him Coventry was going to get bombed? Not according to Bletchley Park. Bletchley had decoded a number of messages clearly indicating a major raid was going to happen in the near future. And the assumption was that it was going to be either Birmingham, Coventry or London. But they didn't have enough information to establish which one. But even if Simon is right, Churchill's not in the clear just yet. That's because there were other ways to predict German bombing raids. The British knew that the Germans used radio beams to direct their bombers to their targets. At three o'clock on November the 14th, the RAF detected these beams crossing in the skies over Coventry. They knew then that the city was the target of Moonlight Sonata. 
So surely, at that point, the message would have got to Coventry to expect a major raid, but it didn't. No specific warning came through to Coventry to expect anything out of the ordinary. There was no uh, prior warning other than the warning that the radar system would have picked up, and that would have been no more than perhaps half an hour's worth of warning. The preparations were therefore nothing unusual. So why was there no warning? Was this a calculated decision by Churchill or was it just too late to act? It's very much the case it was too, too late to act. There is very little in the way of uh, preventative measures that could have been taken. Even so, it seems strange that the news of the radio beams pinpointing Coventry never reached the city. But then again, it's not entirely clear whether the message reached Churchill either and his own actions later that day are puzzling. So that afternoon after lunch, Churchill headed into Oxfordshire. He was going to have a night in the country. Just before he left, he was handed a box containing the latest intelligence. And when he opened it, he reacted immediately. He turned to his secretary and said, there's going to be a raid on London, we're going back. The Prime Minister made no mention of Coventry, and he headed for a familiar rooftop to watch the events unfold. That night, Churchill came to this, the roof of the air ministry. He wanted to watch the bombs fall on London that night. Instead, they fell on Coventry, more than 80 miles north of here. On the face of it, it looks like Churchill hadn't been kept in the loop. But was his behaviour all that it seemed? Coventry-born writer Alan Pollock thinks it was all an act. And in his play, One Night in November, he claims Churchill knew exactly where the bombers were heading. The issue is not whether he knew, but why he did what he did. We know absolutely for a fact from the RAF report published two days after the raid that by three o'clock on the day, the German navigation beams were intercepting over Coventry and that the highest commands uh, uh, of the British establishment were put in the picture. Alan thinks Churchill's reaction on opening his intelligence box was his own piece of theatre. Why did Churchill say what he said to his secretary, John Martin? We can never know. All I know for sure is that the information in that box could not possibly have indicated London. But could Churchill really have been covering up what he knew? And is there any evidence that he stopped warnings about Coventry from reaching the city? We found the original intelligence reports at the National Archives, and they tell a different story. That on the morning of the raid, the intelligence chiefs wrote to Churchill clearly saying that the target was London. We believe that the target areas will be probably in the vicinity of London, but if further information indicates Coventry, Birmingham or elsewhere, we hope to get instructions out in time. Those instructions never reached Coventry, but even so, the documents suggest Churchill hadn't expected the city to be the target. Nearly all historians would say that not only did Churchill not know uh, that it was specifically going to be a raid on Coventry, uh, but there is no evidence to suggest that he concealed um, any knowledge to, to that effect. Perhaps we'll never know for sure, but I believe it's time Coventry shook off this rumour. The older people in Coventry need to look at this and they need to say, it was just the fog of war. I think we have to acknowledge that little could have been done to save Coventry from an attack on this scale. This city was destroyed by German bombers and not by Winston Churchill. Pete Waterman on the truth behind the wartime bombing.